You're probably sitting here, why am I sitting here having a beer on the very start of this? But well, you'll see soon. You keep watching, you'll find out all the interesting hard parts getting in here and then the rewarding parts. I'm gonna tell you a bit about the story how we actually got into the Pentecost River. I've never been here in such low tide on a neeps. I didn't even think it was gonna be possible to get in here. I took a big risk. I thought I was actually gonna get stuck on a sandbar. Had a fair idea which sandbar it was and if I knew if I just passed that, I had a bit of a chance. But honestly, I did not expect to actually push in on these neap tides. I've been marking this channel for quite some time and coming in and out of it. Got a fair idea on what tide, how much you need and how much, you know, buddy is too little. But I've just proven that wrong to myself in a way. Like if I went off a meter off my marks, I'm talking, you know, like two to 300 mil of water, there was no way I was gonna get in here. And that's all it took. So I hit one sandbar, which you'll see and had to stop there for a while. Just waited for that tide to slowly push in and then just keep going. Well, keep watching this. You'll find out why I'm having a beer. Smile on my face, no doubt. But I'll come back to the story. I'll let you watch this first and uh, we'll continue from there. Two jerrys on the back. There's 40 litres. There's another 60 litres here. That's 100 litres. It's got fuel for the Jenny as well. The boat's full. Everything's packed. The swag is covered just in case we get a bit of spray. What do we got in here? Landing net, clothes, food. Um, yeah, all the dry goods are inside there. Another hatch up the front. That's the same. I've actually used the anchor well. That's got stuff in it. Big fridge. All the food and everything's in there. We've got another 20 litres of water. So plenty of water. Heaps of water in the fridge. And the Starlink. Well, this could be a disaster. Where I'm going today, it's just gonna be a nightmare if I get caught, or hopefully a bloody ripper. <laughs> it's gonna be a toss up. I could get stuck on sandbars for two days. It's gonna be absolutely crazy if I do, but we'll survive. I've got enough water, I've got enough food, I've got shelter, I've got, you know, to get out of this sun, because it's absolutely blooming hot. The flyers are about, but I should be safe if I do get caught out. Come along, let's see how we go on this adventure or it could be a survival adventure. I don't know what's gonna happen yet. Come along guys, let's get out there. So this is where the fun begins. Sandbars all the way through here. The water is really, really dirty. I'm not sure what's going on. Maybe it's stirred it up from that rain. I mean 1.3, 1.5 meters, but it just jumps up and down here, so we'll just take it a bit easy. Fingers crossed and get there. Alright, All right, first sandbar. We're on. <laughs> Bugger. Lift the motor up here. Hopefully drift off this thing. Just changes so much here, it's crazy. But we got incoming tide. We're right for now. You can see there, I'm in between the islands. A lot of sandbars. Ooh, hey birds, go away. Okay, I'm getting away from these birds. Whoa. <laughs> What the heck is going on then? They were just chasing me. You can see there's a shadow line in the water there. So I'm right on this sandbar here. It curves around. Hopefully I can drift over this soon. Keep making the journey through. I'm just gonna rock my boat side to side and just slowly creep forward. I'm actually thinking I should have come around along this island here. We'll have a look and see if there's a deeper channel there. But I'm thinking, oh, you can still see a shadow line there as well. It actually changes every year. So the direction what I've got to try and head to, basically straight over from here and head over towards the other side. I'm slowly moving at the moment. So we have some big fires here at the moment. It is just smoke everywhere. 
It's actually been like that for the last week. So the point we're heading to is right up in the back here. Now there is sandbars all the way through. We'll have to see just how we go. It's actually up a bit further I'm getting worried about. And if I get stuck, I will be stuck there for two days on a sandbar. So this fishing trip will actually turn into a, a survival trip. Oh, here we go. I'm actually starting to move. I'm gonna bring the drone back down and just keep pushing as far as I can. And we're drifting again. All right, try again. We're gonna try and get over to the other side here. Sandbars in the middle. I'm not liking it. Coming through a uh, full 300 mil of water, idling. Still got a fair way to go. See if we can get up there. <laughs> that was absolutely crazy. <laughs> oh, I made it. I've got goosebumps. That's just insane. I did not know you could get up here on this tide. So we finally get into the Pentecost River, got to the mouth. Once I get to the mouth, I knew I was right. It was a like, you ripper. I knew I could get up in, you know, on where I wanted to get to. So I was like, you beauty. You come in, this is the first day. I've kind of like, it's already incoming tide and it's pushing up. So I've kind of missed the, you know, the best part of the run. So I get to the back, being the neeps, I thought it'd actually be nice and clean and green. And you know, just not dirty with spring tides are pushing in and turning over. Whew. The wind blew up, the water was dirty, and it was like, oh no. These tides are dropping, so they're getting smaller. So I just pushed through on this tide, so I'm actually stuck here, I can't get out. I'm committed. <laughs> I'm thinking, what? I'm going to be trolling, it's going to be dirty water. Oh no, what have I done? But we all know, you just got to push on and go, well, bear with it, buckle down and go for it. You can feel the current pushing in, swirling up against these trees and we're on a small tide. So it's just coming all over those sandbars and just, just like a wave of water just absolutely insane. But I got here. I'm not stuck on a sandbar. I'm not doing a survival mission. But the water. Jeez, it's murky. <laughs> you little ripper. See the sandbar wide right through. That extends over the other side. I've worked out where the channel is and just kind of capture it. If you moved over to a metre, you bang straight on a sandbar. Yeah, it's just crazy. So I'm pushing up into the back at the moment. I'm excited. I am excited. Coming up to Carney Sandbar. Where you got stuck into here. Sorry, Carney. Total carnage, Andy. <laughs> uh, you probably wanted to keep that a bit of a secret, but I did slip it up in one of the videos. Had to, it was too good. <laughs> I'll get out of the singlet, I'm starting to get cooked, it's warming up. Get into the fishing. Here we go here. Water's dirty, the wind is just crazy at the moment. It's right up. I've had to put my, my mic on to see if I'm gonna get away from this wind noise. Worst part about it, I've got my troll straight into the wind and the wind's blowing straight onto the mic. I'm gonna cook some breakfast up, but we're gonna fast forward three days ahead. I wanna introduce you to a very special man, a mate, a brother, and a bloody legend, and share some real life experiences with us and tell us how he's got where he is today. And then we'll come back and continue on. Just so you guys know what's going on, I'll get a virtue to um, Sam Birch to explain what he actually does here. <laughs> what do you, so what do you do? So yeah guys, I'm Sam Birch from Birch's Fishing Tours. I operate at a home valley and also Kanana. I run a fishing and hunting tour business. And yeah, we taste the little barramundi. Yeah, awesome. In, how long have you been doing this for now? Four years now, yeah. Four years? Yeah. Well, I know you've been busy and like your four-wheel drive tours, I see the guys on TV. Yeah, yeah. They're all four by four. So yeah, we do the, I do 10-day tag-along tours. I do overnight camps. I do, um, I do five-day tag-along. I do fishing and hunting, fishing, uh, two different types of fishing and hunting. We've got one with just a bush turkey um, and then all day fishing. And then we've got the full experience, I call it, with a smoking ceremony, turkey shooting, fishing, and then we're going to shoot a cow and butcher him up. Yeah, nice. Show people on how we do it out here. This is, this is our supermarket out here. We get all our food from out here and just give them an experience of a lifetime. 
Yeah, that'd be bloody <laughs> awesome. So how many nights is that? Or it all depends, does it? Or? Oh, so the, the full experience is we do that in a day. And just a day from 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. Yep. Um, and then the same thing with the bush turkey. We do 5 to 5 as well. Um, with the fishing and hunt, uh, with the, just the fishing, it's from 7 a, uh, 6 a.m. to 3 p.m. daily. Yeah, right. And yeah. then we do the 10 day tag along, along the Umbulgari track. 10 day, yeah, yeah, right. And like, I mean, that Umbulgari track, that's just, that's nothing to muck around with, eh? <laughs> yeah, no, that's next level stuff, that's stuff. <laughs> Turn boys into men, I thought it. <laughs> Have you? Yeah, well, that's it, exactly. <laughs> Have you had so much dramas with your cars or anything? Nah, just little, little things, yeah. Just little yeah. Shocky springs. Shocky, yeah, springs or U-bolts. U-bolts, the main ones. Yeah, all right, like dragging. Yeah, and yeah on 79s, yeah, because it's very low. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm right, I'd run an old 80 series. I just thrashed that thing. Oh, that's, yeah. All they say, if the mud ain't flying, you ain't trying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good stuff. Because yeah. uh, who asked for did I see? Is that Sean? Yeah, Sean over oh, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, um, he's got the Audi series too, hasn't he? Yeah, Sooty. Sooty, yeah, yeah. And one's called Big Baz. Yeah, so what time of year do you actually get out and work? Or so we up, so the 10 day tag along, we'll start with that one. That goes from May until late September, because then it's just cool weather, camping, and you can get to the places when the water drops um, after it's a bit too hot. And then I'm open all, all year for the rest, for overnight stays and the five day tag alongs. And the day fishing and the fishing and hunting, yeah, so I operate all year round. Yeah, is it just uh, all like private bookings through your website or so Facebook? Instagram? Yeah, so Facebook, Instagram, website. Um, and yeah, that now, and also this year I went global as well. But my business is global, yeah. I'm on global all overseas, so <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Never thought uh, they'd been on TV majority this year. I've been on with uh, Mark LaCroix, uh, Four Drive Adventure Show. I've seen that, that was awesome, yeah. Um, with, uh, what's his name, Charles Woolley last year flew up. Did a documentary on my life story in Barramundi. Oh, really? With Channel 7 Spotlight. Nice. That was good, yeah. I haven't seen that one come out yet, or was it, it not out? That, it's out, yeah. is it? Yeah, it came yeah. out last year, yeah. Yeah, righty, eh? Uh, yeah, right. And then I did, uh, what is it, five, six episodes with um, for, uh, for All for Adventure with Jason and Simon. Oh, up, yeah. Up on B-Track, yeah, that was good. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was, yeah, I've seen that one, I think. That's when they towed that big trailer big and everything? Big trailer, yeah. Oh. One of the toughest trailers I've seen. Yeah, oh, <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> where they tow that thing. Yeah, yeah. Far out. But yeah, now nah, it's going really good. Um, next year's looking really good for myself. It's nearly booked out so yeah, for right. the 10 days. Yeah. And then the fishing and the day trip just come in. When so it your comes. fishing's just more like a, a hobby, what you love doing? Yeah, or it, I'm doing yeah. something I love, mate. Yeah, 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 that's it. <laughs> People say, How come, why don't I get tired of it? You don't get tired of doing something you love. Nah, that's it, eh? Yeah. It doesn't matter what size barra, but yeah. I mean, big ones are good, but... Every barra gets me excited. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I reckon anything over 80 centimetres is good. <laughs> anything yep. under is a good fee. <laughs> <laughs> Throughout the series, we'll keep coming back to Birchie, finding more interesting stories about his whole lifetime. It's bloody amazing. You'd be very surprised how much this man has actually been through. For now, we'll go back and get back to the fishing. The little croc was just having a feed. Right out of that creek's mouth. Just got his head out of the water. Chewing a mullet or something, I think. Coming up to high tide now, so we're just gonna have a cast around in the cleaner water for a bit. I knew it was gonna be slow this morning, so we will just try our luck on the high. There is some big mullet around here. We've just seen a swell just over here. I didn't even see that bugger sitting on the bank over there. It'd be a good 11, 12 foot. Well, seven hours fishing, not a hit. Crazy. I knew today was gonna to be pretty tough, but I didn't realize it was gonna be this tough. <laughs> Unreal. Keep pushing. Push through those barriers, should be right. Keep the faith. <laughs> First day, absolutely hard. Not a bite, not a fish. It was just crazy. This brings us to the second day. I actually sleep in. I knew the tide and everything, and this was my best opportunity to get into some barrier at least, you know. I knew the low tide was coming up at uh, seven o'clock in the morning, so I actually didn't move until about five o'clock in the morning, made a coffee, kind of relaxed, and the water was still dirty at the front. And I was sitting there, no, what is going on? Like, the wind was backing off. So I decided to go back up into the back of the creek, and the water was getting cleaner and cleaner. Now, hang on, like, tide's still dropping. Surely it's got to get clean when where I want to fish. So I spent about half an hour, 40 minutes up at the back. And it's like, like I've, I just got confidence in this one particular spot. 
All right, bite the bullet. Dirty, clean, I'm going there. I get out and it's patchy and cleaning up. So you bloody ripper. Throw a couple of rods out, troll and lures, and this is what happens. Morning champions, got my coffee, we're up and running. Got two rods trialling, gonna have a look here. Just hopefully this water cleans up on these neeps. So this is the second day, and uh, the first day, oh, bloody hard. Not a bite, nothing. So I'm hoping today, total turnaround. For if it doesn't, I'm gonna have to uh, do a complete rethink of what's what to do here, because it's gonna change and make things hard. The tires are dropping out even more, as I was lucky to even get here, so I was surprised. But we'll see and find out and give it a bloody good go. Starting to mark up a few fish. Jeez, about time, we're all through here. Guys, this is just insane how long this bite has been for. It's gonna keep going forward. Oh. Get these lines in. What have we got it on? Wow, absolutely crazy. That has been, I think like 13, 14 hours. Ooh. Oh, he's not a bad fish. Oh, <laughs> yes. Wow, yes, I was saying 13, 14 hours to actually get a bite. Now we just gotta stay onto it. I'm gonna move up to the front of the boat. Let's hope we can get a bite session here. Oy. Oh, it's a nice fish, very nice fish. Come on, you good thing. I tell you what, that's what you call patience. 13, 14 hours of fishing to actually get a bite. Wow. Oh, he's a he's a bloody really good fish actually. I didn't think it was going to be this big. Could it be close to ninety? Definitely 90. Don't jump, mate. Oh, well, you're going to, aren't you? Oh, come away. Okay. Let's get this landing net. Oh, what am I hooked up on? Come on. I've been waiting for you for a very long time. <laughs> Jeez, he's got some go to him. Come on, mate. Over this way. Oi, not ready yet.
Okay, mate, relax, relax. We'll get you off. There we go. Oh, no way. Gee, here we go, this one. Straight into the net. Yes! <laughs> oh, this is gonna be bigger than I think. <laughs> oh, absolutely crazy. All right. Come on, up you come. Oh, definitely 90s. Oh, okay. Out you go, big fella. Oh, big girl. Oh, it's really hooked up here. We'll just get this out. Oh, too beautiful. Bloody excited. 14 hours. Tell you what. Oh, I'm not going to call it. Let's have a look. <laughs> 14 hours guys unbelievable and guess what smack on a meter <laughs> Wee. that is bloody awesome look at that guys 14 hours of fishing <laughs> smack on a meter unreal <laughs> you bloody ripper that was really tough going, really tough. Let's get this girl in. I'm not swimming any fish anymore. It's just gonna be speared straight over the side. Whew. Such a beautiful fish. Let's go. Thank you very much. Yes, absolute ripper. Yes, 14 hours for one bite. Crazy, mind blowing. All right, let's see if we get a bite and keep it going. Smack on a meter. Unbelievable. Fish number one, 14 and a half hours later. And it was like, yes, finally, one fish. I mean, that's, that's hard work, that's doing it hard. Trolling, not one bite, finally get a bite. I made a fish. I'm definitely not complaining. Like, I love it. It, it. This is what you do. You come out here and try and catch a big fish, and that's what it's all about. I mean, I love catching small fish as well, but when you get a big one, you release it. There's just nothing better. It's just awesome. Then comes the second fish, 70 centimetres, straight off of the meter fish, and I lose it. Up next to the boat, about three metres off, spits it. Ah. Oh. Now, when you're doing these videos for years, guys, you know, you're just thinking to yourself, oh gosh, like, how am I gonna put a video together? This is just crazy. I've got one fish, I've lost one fish. How am I gonna put a vlog? Stress levels are starting to go up. Not really. <laughs> I'm pretty relaxed. If it happens, it happens, you know, so I'm just, yeah, I'm pretty queasy like that. You try your best. You make it work. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. So six and a half hours later, you know, I went and got some bait, tried to keep them alive. They died straight away. Water temp was 32.8 degrees. I had them in a bucket and yeah, there was just no way they were gonna live. So after I pulled them out, I got a couple of caddies. I'm thinking, nah, bugger this baiting. They start trolling. So the fish seem to be coming up high. I'm gonna put a small Bobby Dazzler on, Guns N' Roses. I can tell you one thing, oh, it is hot. <laughs> Come on fish, I can see him there. So it's giving me some hope. You got that one so far, buddy, you're not a bad fish to start with. It just shows you how uh, like bar fishing or any type of fishing, it's not that easy. 
it's um, you know you can actually really work for it and not pay off at all. Otherwise, you just keep pushing yourself, and you know eventually it does just come into a bit of a bite time period, and it can be for 10 minutes, it could be for an hour. It just changes so much. But we'll keep pushing through. Hopefully that wasn't just a bite period for just today. Sea fish, just keep working the hell out of it. And fingers crossed, we'll pick up a fish for dinner. I'm looking forward to it, I feel like a bit of fish. Be nice. The water's a beautiful colour, absolutely beautiful. From the yesterday, the water was absolutely dirty. And uh, we had the wind come up, the breeze is starting to come in a little bit now, but it's beautiful. You see all these fishing programs on TV and stuff, or YouTube, you know, it's never that easy. There's a lot of hours spent into it, a lot of days, you know, 14 hours it took me to catch one fish. It's insane. You just persevere, you push through, go through the hard times and hopefully the good times, uh, you know, come. So by this time it was three o'clock in the afternoon, you know, like, I normally pull up around about 4.30 in the afternoon, have a shower, get ready, and just download everything. Just leaves, you know, ample of time to be able to do something before it gets too dark. Coming up to four o'clock, I've trolled up, I've turned around, and I'm trolling back. Bang! 20 and a half hours, all the fishing time, I'm hooked up. Check this out. We've got a fish here of some sort. Don't know what it is, but it's plumbing windy. Oh, good fish. Good fish. Oh, I'm hooking this mic on. See if I can turn this mic on for these guys. Over here, kick that out of gear. Ah. Whoa. Jeez, wind. Jeez, they hit like a steam train. I think it's a good fish, I'm not sure. Oh, it's about to come onto the surface. Oh, it's a great fish. <laughs> I want to see if I can get around to the other side of this. Try and get him in the sun for his. Oh my goodness. Can this be number two for the day? Two meteries? Jeez, I think this is on the, uh, oh, it's coming straight in the boat here. I think this is on the Patriot. Oh, here he is. Oh, yeah, this, oh, holy jeepers. <laughs> holy gosh. It's windy. I've got the bucket turning upside down. Bloody starlings getting in the way. Just gonna let him wear down, guys. Because he is a big fish. Whoa. Ah. Oh, he keeps hiding underneath the boat. Oh, he's up the front now. Let's go to the front. Here we go. Holy jeepers. Holy jeepers. Oh. Come on, you could think. <laughs> 